The Chen <laughs> gets rid of the Io as well. Magnus and Pangolier taken out by ninjas in pajamas. Let me simplify this one. If right. you have first pick, you're gonna probably let Io go through. If you don't, you you need to ban it out. This yours again. O P A F. Big words, so big <laughs> big letters actually. This, this, this time it's the the same uh, same first pick, same radiant choices. But PPD chose first pick first, and OG took radiant second. So we have the same setup, mm. but different priorities from the two captains. Yeah, yeah, maybe a little bit surprising since radiant did get nerfed a little bit, just to kind of changing around some very subtle things, uh, moving that mid lane tower north a little bit, so it doesn't have quite as good vision over that hard camp and a little bit harder to get over to it and such. A few very minor changes, which uh, I think we're yet to see really take an effect on, on what people are picking. Still, radiant seems to be very favored. So the Bat Rider, Rider band. Bat Rider band, this could imply that they want to go for Troll Warlord once again. OG is also a team that's pretty stubborn. If they feel something uh, can work, they will make it work eventually, or they will just fall completely by trying so many times. Uh, Bat Rider is just one of the better heroes against the Troll, or Troll Warlord in the laning stage because of his bad turn rate. There's also the kind of push strats as well. You know, Lycan comes to mind. Batrider very good against Lycan in lane. Uh, the ability to catch him when he's pushing towers. Or any of these front-facing heroes, the Dragon Knights, the Lycans, those very strong tower Yeah, let me just heroes. talk about Ooh. Aghanim Scepters no. real quick. No, no, no. Uh, no. <laughs> the most garbage the ones, hole. Lycan oh, and uh, Terrorblade. Like, for a moment, when, when I read it, I thought it was on... Uh, that uh, April 1st the, came around yeah. <laughs> again. <laughs> no, I mean... Terrorblade has Aghanim Scepter tied up to meta. Like, it's such a long cooldown. It would be yeah. way better if it's on Sunder. Yeah, three second fear and a 600 AoE, isn't it? Like, I mean, even if the spell's global, like, if it was a global fear, I still I'm not sure. I still would not buy it. <laughs> just, I'm still not sure, honestly. Like, that's the extent we're at with Terrorblade right now. That guy is in the bin, with yeah, the Aghanims at least. Aghanims His Aghanims is in the bin. Ag the hero's Ag Aghanims being consumable now means that any Aghanims is viable. Yeah, it doesn't we, take a slot, so it's fine. We made 20 plus Aghanims, and they ran out of ideas. Yeah, yeah. Lycan and Terrorblade were definitely at the bottom of the list, and the team's just running around the day before patching. Like, what do we do? I don't know. We give him wolves running down lanes and give the other guy fear he's scary isn't he still talking about being stubborn huh still favoring the crystal maiden but now they have a playmaking hero in sanking which can always be good even if you don't have a good timing on that blink dagger you can just get in and stun people and this is where you start to get into the mind games hey jerex played maiden last game will he play at this game or is it no tail do I we accept not. the sand king or jerex <laughs> the sand king I mean, I, it, this, this is this is such a Jerax patch. Like holding him back on a CM just feels criminal to me. But <laughs> maybe I, I mean, you know, OG they they've surprised me before many many times, especially with their stubbornness when they say this hero is good, and then you watch the hero fail, and everyone goes this hero is rubbish, and then they do it again, and what they have in their galaxy brains of theirs actually comes to tuition, fruition, and then you, everybody stops doubting them again. But yeah, that that OG is is not kind of at 100 percent right now. But I don't they think anybody's taking their right. time. Ooh, ignored last game. Okay. Yeah. First phase this time around, and that could be a signal for that death profit that we have been seeing in a number of these early games in this new patch. Yeah, Team Spirit certainly like the Oracle Death Prophet combo for themselves, and it looks very, very strong when they were throwing it down. So uh, Ninja Pajamas might be taking a page out of their book here. I think they took away cool things from Oracle and uh, Dark Willow, just the base attack speed is nerfed on both of these. Uh, I have to say, Oracle was a little bit broken. Being able to just pump out right clicks. If you have, to, like, it feels good as an Oracle to have like two fairy fires and just click people over and over again. Yeah, and then there's the uh, whole purifying flames thing where all of a sudden you're just hanging around, you know, you're just hanging around on low HP, doop -a -doop -a -doo, and then you just see this orb flying at you, and then all of a sudden you're purifying flames, fortunes end, and your end. Yeah, so they get rid of this uh, Troll Warlord once again, since they banned out the uh, Batrider. And Oracle is great in this game against both Sanking and Crystal Maiden. Everything they have is magical. I want to see DPX. I, th that's what I want to see. I mean, I saw it before in my pubs, but uh, overall the item feels a bit uh, overbuffed. So Morphling is banned, but if Morphling buys Ags, turns into Earthshaker, how far can he fly? Do you, get the, do you get the increased range on the enchant totem? Um, I don't 
No, there, there's not increased range on the spells, is there? It's just increased range on casting, uh, d casting, oh, casting morph. morph itself. Oh, yeah, I see. Yeah, you get cooldown reduction, though. So you basically get as 25 talent as Morphling always. So you're just jumping around non-stop anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah, we... The double Earthshaker is really hilarious. Like, I'm you bad just at got... reading, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay, Gareth. There's still time. Um, but yeah, the, du the double Earthshaker is absolutely fair. It's like the, the skies are just going dark with no. Earthshakers flying around. Morphling added scepter upgrade. While morphed, you gain plus 35% CDR, uh, plus 50% mana cost reduction, and plus 600 cast range. Oh, okay. So I thought it was just on the morph. My bad. Cast uh, I mean, that's, that's how I read it anyway. Mm. It could okay. be right. But I was assuming that you so get if you're plus 600 range Pudge, Fisher. You 600 range you plus on the, on the hook. 1,000 range hook <laughs> with the lowered cooldown, and then you have Agony. What? Uh, yeah. <laughs> anyway. So that, that's why Morphling's <laughs> banned, guys. That, that, that is why we're not seeing the hero. <laughs> Jeez, just delving into that for 30 seconds. Hey, we, we got more We got more meme potential, guys. Nature's Prophet, Tiny next, Aghanim Scepter. Load up that cannon and fire him away. But no, I probably won't be seeing that because that's kind of garbage. And just don't <laughs> use Sprout. It's one of those. <laughs> don't Sprout Tiny, no matter what. Yeah, Earthshaker and Oracle both notoriously bad at dealing, dealing with Treants. So Nature's Prophet can actually pressure a number of lanes regardless of his position. If it's position five, position three, he can cause a lot of issues for the two supports that NIP have already grabbed. Yeah, it looks like it's Indeed. position four and five for NIP. I don't remember seeing uh, 33 playing Earthshaker. Not in a long time, no. All right, so one minute left for Ninja Pajamas. They, uh, last game they did this as well, kind of burning down the reserve time quite early on in the draft, suggesting they're uh, thinking about things a little bit more, kind of looking towards the future in the early stages of this draft and uh, really trying to Psychoanalyze OG. Psychoanalyze OG. Yeah, exactly. I mean, yeah, look at their, look at their profile pictures, and that's enough, I think, for me. <laughs> <laughs> Five anime portrait pictures. Oh, yeah, yeah, they do have those in game. Yeah, that's uh, <laughs> red flags. <laughs> Five red flags. Five big red flags. Oh, and this is another big red flag, actually. Spectre comes out for Ninjas in Pajamas, looking for a repeat of last game on that ace spec. A reasonably early pickup as well. Grabbing it third. Maybe worried about OG taking it themselves. Sand King made in Nature's Prophet. It's a pretty good three hero setup into a Spectre. Yeah, this time they have the three uh, break, uh, the, sorry, the two break heroes in the pool still available in Assassin and the Viper, and possibly an opportunity to pick it. Um, but again, with the nerfs to Nyx Assassin and there's cooldown on Vendetta, that kind of makes the break a little less valuable, so. Let's see, they go for the Life Stealer. They're looking to play much faster pickup. paced, right? Yeah, and the, yeah. it also allows uh, them to have a Frontliner, which they did not have in the previous game, considering uh, how bad of a game LC had. And he does not care too much about Earthshaker. Can also find Oracle within Fast Bomb with the Sanking, just and blow him up. Remaining. Or even the Prophet, TPing around Infested. That's always fun. Yeah, free ride. I'll take it. So right now as NIP, you're looking at two very static supports on your side. Spectre, very slow in the early game until she gets Sol Ring and is able to kind of spam out those daggers. Laning stage doesn't look amazing for NIP. And the fact that you have to now try and win your off lane and your mid lane, this Templar Assassin going blind into the matchup, it could be risky here. Yeah, no, they've got two bands. I kind of hope they ban the Viper, because I don't know, but my Viper's not as good versus T as it used to be, right? He's still okay, but uh, yeah. you got since, the break for the since OG well. has last pick, they just pick Templar Assassin right now. They they were maybe afraid that it's gonna be banned out. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's usual. So uh, no point in saving behavior. it. And also, it means you can ban a counter directly without having to give away your pick, um, and maybe get that banned out instead. So, yeah, they needed a hero that can create space for Spectre, so she can get farm. Now they have Earthshaker, Templar Assassin, which they. These heroes love to play fast, and uh, you have a save with Oracle. Yeah, the Earthshaker can also help TA out mid, because TA really likes to win our matchups, and got a lot of kill potential on that hero as well, with the insane amount of damage you can bar earlier on. I feel like as NIP, you're maybe more worried about a hero like Pugna for Thompson in that mid lane matchup against the TA. Even with an Earthshaker coming in, Pugna can outplay pretty hard. And it gives you so much push with Nature's Prophet, Pugna, Lifestealer, you play at a very, very fast tempo. What, what, what got changed with Pugna? We were talking about his mana oh, regen, mana right? Regen it got buffed got from the <laughs> nil to 0.5, so a bit of a bit of an increase there. 
Outside Agility of that. gain increased as oh, well. Poggies, agi gain. And the net award mana, mana loss increased, so. Jesus. Oh, mana Poggies. loss increase. Yeah, don't call me out. <laughs> I'm not letting that one slide. Just <laughs> a... Lamau. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, we don't speak that way. Like, you can type that, but you don't say it out loud. I can and I will. Gary B does what he wants. I do what I do. Damn prisoners. When you're the host later on today. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm going to say <laughs> whatever then, I want. Then you can control me. They need an offlaner, maybe something that builds into into pipe. Uh, they're still tight, Hunter in the pool. Maybe a bit uh, greedy. It's great against Life Stealer. Centaur is out there. Centaur is there. Centaur is Spectre and TA. It's pretty cool. What do you think about the TA Agonim Centaur Agonim Centaur into Life Stealer, sorry Gary. Yeah. Uh, doesn't feel that great. Yeah. On the other hand, you have, let's say, a Tide Hunter against Life Stealer feels True. way better in the laning stage. They don't have much time left, only seven seconds. Were you about to say the Night Stalker, Gareth? No. Okay. You did, though. So Gareth could be, an, uh, could be an option. Ooh. Oh, okay. Uh, so is this a three position Enigma now? Or a three position Earthshaker? We'll have to wait and see, I think. I think it's position three Enigma since you can't share items anymore. I, I'm not sure why they did it. It's from Dota 1, you could share Ring of Regions, uh, Sobi Masks. And, Perseverance. Uh, yes, but they needed something that goes through Lifestealer Rage. They basically had none, so they needed some kind of a disable for him. This is a free Storm Spirit game. I'm gonna go with OG right away. <laughs> yeah, get yep. your Bloodstones ready, boys. They're gonna come out. Catch on no, to Oracle. You can't send reward for himself, so he can hide in the Sandstorm. It always feels so good when you're playing. Not again. Invis heroes like that, uh, either Sanking or Treant Protector. I think also we're gonna see more of Treant. This hero got buffed. So you put a Sentry. Th they are forced to put a sentry oh. down first, and then you can just uh, put it after Peter. and eat it. BPD. Peter, taking some hits, taking some heavy hits, actually. No Tail and Jarax ganging up on the five position here. He's only got the Fortune's End. I'm not sure that's going to be enough to save him here. The Blast comes in from Jarax, and there's your first blood. Jarax was saving that uh, Crystal Noah to last hit, and uh, they need the TP to a lane because they're going to escort the Creep Wave, harass if everyone. And everyone comes. How much can they block this in order to get under the tower? I'm not sure. Is it going to be enough? Maybe. And then blasting them as well to slow them down from Jarex. Wow, they're really trying hard to get him under the tower here. And then Arna's even going to come under just to make sure that these creeps are being hit by that building. That was really nice from OG. All right, so 33 going to be starting it up in the top lane on the Enigma there, completely alone versus Jarex. Uh, meanwhile, uh, Prophet's getting dropped. Really Bottom lane, a lot of action, no tail in some trouble, and that's going to be an easy kill for Ace. Certainly is, and Seb can only watch, unfortunately, as he is uh, blocked off by that Fisher. But, uh, you know, Seb, Seb gets some slow XP now, so not the worst thing in the world, no longer have an opportunity to kill him. Meanwhile, in the mid lane, it's uh, currently Fada versus Topson. Fada starting out with one and zero, Topson up to four and two. Not looking great, but the quick way is coming at the top of TA, so should be able to recover a little bit of that. Yeah, the thing we didn't mention is uh, Storm Spirit against the TA matchup. Uh, he removes two refraction charges once he has overload. Yes, it's not too pleasant for Fata. <laughs> Uh, Sacks are coming in from behind though. Thompson could be in some trouble here. The Fisher is available, but doesn't want to throw it out. It looks like they. Did you just say available? Available? Yeah. Well, I I wish I did because <laughs> it didn't work. Seb so just uh, sitting inside a sandstorm, having a nice time, ignoring the world around him, as we all wish we could do sometimes. Ace and TPD just backing up to the tower. They're, they're having a pretty easy time in this lane. I mean, I don't think anything is going to happen down here much unless Saxon rotates in, which he is. And now they've got No-Tail on the front lines. I'm glad I added that little disclaimer there because No-Tail is in a lot of trouble now. He's just being blasted down by all of these heroes. The Purifying Flame is going to help heal him up a little bit. The Burst Strike is too late from Seb, though. The right click from PPD will find the kill onto No-Tail. Meanwhile, up to the top lane, 33 is being bullied a little bit by Honor and Jarax here, but they only really have slows, and 33 can just walk himself away. Lifestealer still had the open wounds, did not want to commit. Uh, also, 33 was saving a point, uh, decided to go for Midnight mid Falls, lane. mid lane. Bart is in some trouble as the bus coming in. Nope, just a little bit harassed. Taking control off this lane, this illusionary helping out as well. 
TA hates playing against Illusion Runes because, I mean, it, it just re melts her refraction in the lane. Super annoying for her to play against. If she wants to kill them, she has to use refraction charges on a right click. It's just all around miserable times. Yeah, Illusion Rune early on is like, oh god, why me? Why did I get this rune? It's completely useless. But uh, sometimes it's, it's good, especially in a scenario like this or for scouting. Absolutely. Thompson yeah. playing so aggressive, the 1 1 1 build, allowing him to remove all the refraction charges and the. Uh, CS wise, 10 3 against 12 5. Yeah, TH managed to come back in quite a big way into that lane, which is uh, kind of to be expected, I think, in that matchup. Uh, Thompson's in really deep now. With Saxer on top of him, he's going to have to get this kill quickly, otherwise, he will find himself bringing down pretty quickly uh, to Saxer here as the Fisher comes through. Thompson, even though there's two heroes here, he's still not really showing any signs of fear. He'll just run back to the side of the river. Saxer trying to chase him, but this is just a rotation really used for nothing so far, and I don't think Fada will be able to kill Thompson in this situation, even with the Earthshaker's help. So just really relieving the pressure on TA more than anything. A bit of acupuncture from This the is a Thompson that I like to see. Playing so aggressively, glyphing the creeps, playing between Tier 1 and the Tier 2 tower. Absolutely. Sometimes Voice he can well. look like a fool or, or look like a genius. Depends uh, if someone <laughs> rotates, uh, but that's, that's the thing I like about him. Yeah, absolutely. Such an entertaining player to watch. And TA's gonna guess top, and that is unsuccessful. But Saxa waiting down at bottom and grabs that Emperor's rune. Maybe Mo taking making himself present in the bottom lane here. Topson. I mean uh, maybe Saxa and TA can make something happen. Uh, and again, just uh, throwing down the aggression onto Fada, just using that electric vortex, seemingly off cooldown right now. <laughs> And uh, ask for a high, high five. five. Uh, there we go. Fadi gives it to him. What a well player. No one on his team is going to high five him, so he needs to get high fives from the other team. That's sad. Bounty rune spawning in 30 seconds. You want to outpush the, the wave so you can give your position for kind of an easy bounty pickup. Throwing some trees at them as well. Barrow's track actually forwards here onto NIP. The purge comes through and uh, Root 7 plays for a little bit. No tell actually changing targets, just chasing PPD off all suggesting that they're not really looking for a kill here. Just looking to uh, clear off and uh, try and grab these bounty runes, but PPD is very much on the case. Now there's three bounty runes going for NIP. No tell manages to TP across and get another one, and he's not going to be in any trouble here either, as the Spectre is far too low to actually try and fight him. Shriner's ready. Spectre will pop. Does anyone want to join? Feels like uh, no one. Oh man, Saxa uh, trying to bully Storm Spirit out of the lane. Fisher block just faking it. <laughs> just pumping those fishes out. No response. Oh, is Fada going to stop high-fiving him? Oh, very rude. The friendship is over in the middle lane. Saxa again. I mean, has this Ashika done enough this, this laning phase so far? Fada? Yeah, yeah he has. Uh, no, not Fada, the Earthshaker. The Earthshaker. Well, he's involved in the. Two out of two NIP kills. He put uh, yeah. a lot of the pressure on the mid lane. CS, uh, Y, Storm lost some, and uh, bottom lane, he secured the lane for Spectre. Thompson now hitting that level six, still just coming forward onto Fada time and time again, forcing Saxa back to this lane. He's trying to beat TA for the rune, but the rune doth not spawn. Thompson, though, uh, can't actually get past this right now, but the fish is just running out, so it's absolutely fine. Up onto the high ground he goes. I love the way he's put that anime picture in the middle lane as well. I'd be told I'd be told if the like, guy was leaning about shoves down an anime picture in the lane. I'm just I'm just gone at that stage. Top lane and Enigma's gonna die. He certainly is. 33 being bullied under the tower as Notel makes the first rotation with this global teleport. Jax and Anna finally find blood. Yeah, usually life stealers go for face boots, uh, but uh, in this kind of a scenario, he does not have to. Like straight Midas uh, is gonna do way more because he's having an absolutely free farm on this top lane. Also, they're gonna pressure the tower. 43 and 13. And now a tower. tower Anna's pockets are lined with gold. Meanwhile, Seb is uh, not having a bad time either, to be honest. 37 and 8 compared to the Spectre's uh, 23 and 5. So this has actually been a very convincing bottom lane for OG. At one point, they're going to need to put Spectre on top. I think it could be the time right now because she's not getting uh, too much out of the bottom lane. And you can see the rotation from Anna. 
Well, they're down the bottom lane, yeah, finding the aggression once again. Ace being run down. More right clicks will be required and they will come in. Ace is killed. Not having the dream start to the game this time around. Well, Saxa, he tries to come in to just block them off or something here, but he's probably just going to lose his life as well. Anna finding two and looking for a third. PPD running himself back here. Can Ochi really chase for this one as well? Sep certainly wants to, but will show a bit of hesitation as he gets under the tier two tower. So just wait up on this high ground, blocking off any path, making sure he keeps Sep eyes not on done. PPD. He's not done, is he? Viral striking once in again. Anna closing the gap. The root comes out. The purge as well from PPD, but he will get dropped. Vada, though, looking to turn up on this one. Ace as well is joining this party. No tail going for the TP out, but Malthus will cancel that. Don't even know if it was needed to be cancelled. It looked like I had enough damage anyway. Meanwhile, Seb is up in the trees. He needs to make a hasty getaway. Burrow strike through. Oh, Fada. He, missed oh, he misses a Fisher by a tiny, tiny Whoa. amount there. They had the courier. They, had, they could have just waited. They had the, the They had a out. trap as well. They had TA coming in with the traps, but yeah, someone a little bit too hasty there, Saxa. Just uh, premature Fisher. Happens Very nice rotation from Anna. He killed the tier one tower on top, instantly TP's bottom, and now the bottom lane is where he is going to be until he gets his Radiance. I feel like Spectre should have swapped right away after the tier one tower fell on the top lane because she's under leveled and there was a huge creep pushing top. Indeed, yes. And it continues the rotation. He's uh, he's not happy with Ace being in his lane here. He, he wants it all to himself, the greedy boy. Meanwhile, a mid lane, a kill onto 33 actually takes place as Jarex, Thompson, and No Tail all make the rotations in. So this is kind of giving an NIP a bit of a taste of their medicine from last game, you know? They had the global presence. This time they have the Nature's Prophet and the Storm to just zip on you wherever you are. It's very hard to feel safe on NIP right now. Let's see if OG can maintain this lead. Is Jarek's actually going to go down here in the middle lane. A lot of right click damage. Thompson with the haste rune coming in close, but the disarm comes out in response from PPD. Meanwhile, No Tail just trying to quietly slink away in the back lines here, but there is an Earthshaker on top of him, so no chance of TP. No chance of really staying alive here as Ace will chop him up with that big old blade of hers. They wanted to give the last hit to Spectre because she's under leveled and uh, she just TP'd, so she needs to get something out of this. Yeah. If you look at Enigma's items, you might think. It's a Tide Hunter, but it's actually Enigma. Oh, thank you for clicking that one up. Going towards the brown boots next, then looking towards the one, but yeah, not not exactly rolling in cash, which is what we're kind of used to seeing from the old Enigmas when they always seem to have like loads of gold. Uh, this one just uh, sing with the Vlads, and that's about it. I don't remember seeing Enigma with Vlads like ever. I'm always. Uh, I always like the players who think out of the box, but uh, Vlad's mana region also got nerfed, so I don't see why he decided to go for it in this uh, particular scenario. There's really no physical damage on OG whatsoever besides the life stealer, and uh, he he's gonna transition into Radiance at one point. Yeah, that's it's a really uh... weird build by 33. He he's the type of the player that uh, builds. Uh, Let's say he plays Night Stalker. He has a casual Bracer, Magic Wand, uh, Phase Boots, uh, Vlads. He has extra Wind Lace. He always buys those uh, cheap, small items that yeah, can benefit uh, can a lot from him. Yeah, from it, yeah. yeah. Top lane, mid lane. Just kidding. I'm just teasing my boy Scriff. <laughs> <laughs> he won't fall for it. He's he's, nah, he's, he he's wise to it. He, he's very calm. Keeping on his toes. Yeah. Uh, Zip comes in from the storm, looking for PPD here. Doesn't manage to close the gap, and the burst strike comes through as well. They do have enough damage to bring down this Oracle. Ace held still in the trees. Does have the dagger gun south out. That's actually falling pretty low here. The black hole comes in, catches out too. Thompson in some trouble as well. He's gonna get bought down. No! Gets it up to the high ground there, just about zipping away. Meanwhile, the uh, ultimate from Jarek's doing a ton of work, actually. Fada held still inside the frostbite as well. Thompson, he's healed up and coming straight back into this fight. Can he bring down Fada though? Actually, Thompson's dropping kind of low, but he's got that electric Vortex got out the remnants and Thompson will just about survive, playing it to the line. But that is the Thompson we know and love there in the middle lane. And uh, NIP, well, they, they, it looks like they were going to make a turnaround at several points in that fight, but it's just, just a little bit too much coming out from OG and a little bit too little coming out of NIP. Yeah, he barely survived. Popped the magic wand at the last second, uh, got out of the black hole, and uh, no casualties besides oh, Seb, also yeah, a dime back from BP. This is brave. He's trying to go for the solo kill on Saxon. No tell TPing in as well to help out his buddy, and then we'll be able to bring down an Earthshaker there. That's a blink dagger for Sanking. Usually Seb is not the player that uh, gets a blink dagger early on. Like, he was the one building pipes, even on the mag. Like. Edward Guardian Greaves, a full pipe, and then he gets a Blink Dagger. But in this kind of a scenario, they have a secured late game, so 
he also has a hero to play with. With Storm Spirit and uh, Life Stealer is their late game insurance, but uh, he's also this. he's also being active right now. Look at him. They saw this, but there's not much they can do about. It. Oh yes, there is. False Promise actually comes through. PPD keeping him alive, but now making himself a target. Topson is closing the gap, but he's dropping really low. The fish is actually going to finish him off. Topson dies for this kill. Ace will finally drop here, and he needs to get himself away though. He's Gonna make it up to the high ground here, and NIP, they don't really want to go any more than this, and OG actually do want to go more than this. They're just uh, waiting and waiting, and finally throws in that burrow strike, and this should secure the kill onto Saxa. There we go, the rage come out, make sure he's not getting stunned up. Meanwhile, Fada trying to fight up here. I'm not Big sure this is the right move. A huge ulti by Jerax, holding Fada still. He cannot chase any further than this, and will die in that freezing field. OG tearing NIP apart at every available opportunity right now. A complete turnover from game number one. Looking really rough for NIP. 7,000 network lead already, and they're playing at their tier 3 towers. Uh. Sadly, for Storm Spirit, he died in that previous fight, but uh, Enigma, he's gone. Yeah, kill no after tell. kill. Now they have the global lineup. Exactly. It's not the, the classic exactly. global lineup with Spectre Zeus, but the Nature's Prophet TPing, Storm Spirit zipping out from far away. You have Lifestealer with the Infest uh, Bomb. I mean, just look at this lifestealer. Look at the gold lifestealer has. He's, he's going for this radiance. He's got the Midas. I've played enough farming simulations. No, this guy is doing it right. Oh, that's massive Bidus. He should use it. Yeah, that's been, that's been, a, been, a, been a while there. Just uh, want to use that Midas there. Oh, there we go. All righty, back to business. Ace, meanwhile, uh, <laughs> if he's looking for a radiance, this is going to be a long time coming for him. So far behind. Well, maybe just focus on uh, getting another raid band. <laughs> like, that's the goal. Keep, keep your uh, yeah, keep it realistic <laughs> here, guys. Come on. Thirty-three, looking up to this uh, top lane. He's got braces queued up. So. That, that's what I talked about. <laughs> yeah, <like. laughs> really not something that's like very high for themselves, are they? An IP. Uh, oop, there comes a big ultimate from Seb, actually. He's going for the solo kill, and Topson's going to help finish it off. 33 killed under the tower. You are never safe in this game. Uh, unfortunately, Seb has probably traded his life for this kill. The Echo just going to come down, make absolutely certain that Seb is slain. But in the bottom lane, Ace is actually just being harassed out by Jerax. I think he had one plus one with him. Uh, no Tail is actually TP'd into this one, but the immediate TP out from the Spectre. No cancel on no tail, but uh, well, the tail will be sacrificed. The treant's already getting to work on a joining up as well. Everyone has a quelling blade on side of NIP. This sprout doing so much work. Maybe they should yeah. have picked tiny. Just kidding. <laughs> Just kidding. No, pick tiny. Uh, Topson gets the bounty rune. Jumping onto the Earthshaker here in Saxa. Now he tried to go for a bounty. Instead, he found his fate. That's going to be four bounties for OG. 10,000 network lead, 15 minutes in. Oof, man, this does not feel good. The problem is once TA's tier one tower falls, you can access her ancients and uh, the creep camps in jungle, which always feels bad for her. Like usually she's the one healing the tier one tower and having access to the enemy ancients, which is uh, kind of a big deal. And it just... Farming, fighting, doing, doing whatever he wants this game, it feels like. So what do NIP need to do to come back into this one? What are their options? I always love to talk uh, how Team A, Team B will get back into this game. They have very limited options. Uh, considering the item build that Enigma went for, the Vlads, I don't think they benefit anything uh, from it. Uh, it's going to be tough. Like Unless OG overextends Earthshaker, Blink Dagger, really far away they don't even have an echo slam right now it's pretty hard to take a fight like yeah maybe I mean, if they can fight before the radiance it's coming it's actually coming on online in the next minute yeah they're gonna make a move now if they want to do anything Seb might be attempting target. Fata kind of edging in on this one. And they only make eyes. The Fisher comes out. The vision is there. The double dust just to make double sure that Seb is seen. He's just going to burrow under the uh, Fisher, and that, that's it. That's the gank over. Really? And now <laughs> Top's actually going on the mid lane trying to bring down Ace. Won't be able to do so. Um, still playing around with Ace here. The TPs are coming in, and Topson actually gets this kill all by himself, but now could be in a bad position. No, nope, never mind. Just going to zip himself away. Well, Fata slowing down Jerax. Uh, waiting on the low ground just to protect his support. Name more iconic duos. Storm Spirit, Arcane Rune with uh, Crystal Maiden, Arcane Aura. Lacoste is saying stupid shit. I don't know. Just <laughs> <laughs> 
All sounds good to me, buddy. Don't you worry. And I feel gathered up on that high ground right now, just farming in packs. That's about all I can do. There's that. Okay, TA's got a Desolator. All right, some real damage now, potential from NIP. They don't have the Blink, but they've got the Death So. If OG overextend, there is something now to punish them. They have the damage to punish them. I think that's really important. One of the plays that they could have gone for is get Roche, but this Sneak Deso it, timing yeah. was was just not there. With the Enigma, Vlad's, Blightstone, and the Deso, they, they could have taken the Roche, but now you're gonna have a Storm Spirit with Aegis, which is probably the best uh, Aegis carrier in the game. Well, some people from uh, Seb's pubs would disagree. <laughs> that is that's, that's an astute observation there, my friend. An astute observation indeed. Uh, Roshan, gonna be finished off here. No attempt at a steal, nothing. I mean, a scan comes out onto them. It takes a very long time. They don't have a good Rosh lineup, but when you're winning this hard, you don't need a good Rosh lineup. You just stay in that pit and dare them to come and fight you. And uh, Jarek solo farms bottom. Do you think they should be trying to kill Jarex in this situation whilst they realize they're all doing Roshan and a squishy Crystal Maiden all by herself? But she's got a Yulzy, but <laughs> it's not the easiest kill. He even decided to go for a cast range. Like, she becomes so tanky with the HP talent, but uh, with the old Scepter and uh, her being positioned four I think the allows her yeah, to cast Crystal Nova from far away. The interrupt onto the black hole as well. Just a little yeah. extra something there. It's on the tick in the book. Radiant all right, so we're currently 18 minutes in, approaching the 20th minute as they jump in the back lines. Actually, you get the immediate kill into PPD. Saxer as well on the front lines is just gonna melt. The Enigma tries to go in and make something happen here, but he's gonna get yields up. He does have a black hole, but there's no point using it with nobody to help him out. And 33 will be imploded in that bottom lane. And uh, again, not, not really a fight happening, just, just kills. Uh, NIP set up for something, but it was just a little bit too late. Roche was already dead. OG, they read NIP's movements very, very well there and just come in and punish them before they can even make it happen. A preemptive strike. And now the bottom tier two tower once again being sieged up. Who needs tower pushing heroes? Just get... Just get Nature's Prophet, Lightstone, yep. and uh, now they're gonna smoke. They popped the uh, smoke, used the sentry before it so they can't be seen. They want to keep playing aggressive. They understand that the NIP is extremely weak at this point. The Spectre showing on the lane. Uh, she built Yasha, which means she's nowhere near the Radiance or any other item. Gonna go for a play on Ana here. Wrong side of the Fisher, maybe. They even threw down the Echo Slam. It's a lot of damage coming down. They actually bring down Ana. NIP find a successful gank. That is an important one. They're gonna grab themselves a bounty room for this as well. Looking for no tail. No tail just trying to run up onto the high ground. Takes the bounty and now will die with pride. Do what you must. I've taken my bounty and I've propelled my purpose. But I'm still gonna go. Although Thompson, he's in. He doesn't care. Four heroes, no problems. Just fighting into all of them here. And this is just a complete lack of lockdown. Seth's even jumping in with this one. He's got the epicenter ripping through. That is Bada just straight up dead. PPD will be able to back himself out and get up those steps. Seb though still looking for the jump onto 33. The badge comes out but there's a barrel strike immediately afterwards. The mana resistance will help out and Seb's actually caught in a really bad place. He will die. This is looking pretty good for an IP actually finding a fight which goes their way. That's a really good trade for them. Also Spectre. <laughs> she got the kill on 2, no tail. Gold. Yeah, very nice gold swing for an IP. That is they should not overextend. OG was way yes. too greedy there. Yeah. Lifestyle's like, I have rage, they can't kill me. And uh, he wanted to pick up uh, two bounty runes on top of his team picking up the other two. Yeah, sometimes you've got to call it what it is. Unfortunately, that was OG just making a mistake. Now they have a Blink Dagger on Earthshaker. Aegis is gone in the less than two minutes. Yeah, maybe some options if, if NIP play, can play passively enough during these two minutes and then look for something as that Aegis goes down. It's... NIP is doing a good job uh, just devoting their triangle so one of the heroes can get farmed there. You want mid lane jump in again with the Infest Bomb onto 33. He will not be making it out of this one alive. The right clicks come in from Ana. Now looking to the sidelines as well. PPD trying to make it up onto the high ground, but no tail will block off his path. And then PPD will fall as well. OG, grab two, grab a tower. Jarax uh, getting the last knock on that tower as a CM. You can see their understanding of the game is uh, completely on a different point. Uh, Storm Spirit, he goes in, doesn't pop Electric Vortex. Lifestealer also doesn't use open wounds on Enigma. They realize he's dead and then they chase for another kill. That Electric Vortex coming into a play, grabbing the Oracle. 
Yeah, I'm just uh, making it look easy. Another arcane rune for Storm Spirit. They might look to do something with this. They've still got the Aegis as well. I love his talent choices in this game. 30 overload damage instead of mana region since you have a Crystal Maiden in your team. And uh, he went for 400 HP talent. Like, usually so you go for this talent uh, if you don't go for Bloodstone. If you go for Bloodstone, you go for Static Remnant damage. Jumping in deep once again, Thompson. Not a care in the world. Doesn't have that Arcane Rune popped. Uh... He just wants to make something happen. Uh, Aegis is gone in 20 seconds. He's, he literally just cannonballed into four heroes without any mana and just walked away from them, though. <laughs> this is the situation we're in right now. Well. Uh, Arna trying to chase down Fada here, but getting jumped on here. They've got the Echo Sam once again. It's going to be another death for Arna down here in the bottom lane. Trying to be as aggressive at the Storm, but doesn't have the same potential. And No Tail just going to be the plus one in this engagement. Two heroes dead on side of OG. NIP, they're finding kills. They're finding something here. NIP once again. I mean, th th this one's on Anna. Yeah. He's been uh, split from the team. Storm Spirit uh, Aegis just ran out. Now yeah. he's full mana. Let's see if he wants to do a huge jump. There it is. Yep, coming in with the silence onto the Spectre here. She's dropping so low, just the storm all alone, but not quite low enough. Ace will survive with the NIP backup coming in quickly. They are forced back for the time being. Topson, though, he's got the TP, he's got the zip, but he's going to be absolutely fine. Meanwhile, Jarex is farming. <laughs> Jarex has farmed a lot this game. Jerk's just chilling. He's involved in 13 out of 24 kills, has won that. Yep. He even decided to go for mana cost, mana loss reduction talent on level 15. You're welcome, Storm. Just buff up your Storm Spirit. OG, do you think they need to play just a little bit more cautiously? Uh, they've been throwing caution to the wind in the last few engagements. There's now a double damage. Now this is looking better. All these heroes coming in. No tell, ready with a global teleport. A gem even on Seb, so they know about any vision they've got placed down. And jumping onto Ace here, there's a great target. Can they bring down the Spectre in time? The double damage on the Storm is going to easily rip through the Spectre's defenses and send her to the grave. Now they're looking for more. PPD trying to run himself away. Gets that magic resist in, but the double damage is doing nearly enough by itself. Thompson is going in. in. No tail is placed in behind. He's got that deep vision coming down. The No tail ward is thrown out. There's the epicenter being just charged up onto Fassa. Bring down that Templar Assassin. It'll be a triple kill for for Topson as OG rip NIP apart and take to their high ground. You can see him understanding where his team is. He ac actually decides to go for it. Most of the players would just back off there. Yeah, absolutely. That is the quintessential Topson play as they're actually jumping onto the Enigma right now. He's got a black hole, but does he want to use it? Absolutely not. And 33, well, it's a short life for him. Does have buyback should he want to use it. Probably doesn't want to. And they will take one barrack and uh, leave with their heads held high, knowing that they have done some serious damage to Ninjas in Pajamas in the last few minutes. I feel like OG could have done this uh, way, way earlier if uh, Lifestealer didn't die two times. Uh, good for them, they had 15,000 network lead, uh, so they could not uh, actually throw this game. Next Roche uh, will, may respawn in 20 seconds. Yeah, that'd be nice for OG for a nice quick respawn here. Yeah, the uh, Urshik is actually really good versus the last year, isn't he? Just like blocking him off his movement so that even if he uses that rage, it, it doesn't it doesn't mean you can go through Fisher. It's a very nice hero to play into a into a life stealer. Another excellent. smoke from OG. Huge zip. Ooh, he's going for a long one. Actually lands it onto Ace right now, but the immediate Manta comes up and the stun came in from Saxa. Top turn dies. And meanwhile, they'll be looking for the return kill onto PPD. Should find this one, but in comes a Haunt. The False Promise as well. Going to keep PPD alive for a little bit longer. Probably still enough damage to finish him off, maybe. So the Fada looking for No Tail. No Tail's going to get chunked down as Anna on the run. Anna gets called out, but Seb's PPD. going in. He's going for the big one. Jumping in deep. Saxa, he's just able to get the Echo Slam off before he dies. 33 in some trouble as Grerax Let's it go nearby. Enough damage coming through. Well, they need to get the physical and they will be able to do so now. Looking towards the Fada as well. The Burrow Strike is out and Fada is dead. Ana coming to life at last. Onto the high ground now. PPD not going to be living any longer than this. He's got the Yules up. 
And, uh, well, that's about all he's going to do before he falls. Four heroes dead on the side of NIP. They might call it. Maybe they just want to wait a little bit longer. No, GG. Was there even a black hole this game? There was one, wasn't there? There was one by the Dire Bottom Shrine, and that is the only black hole we had all game. What a rough second game. And that was just complete composure from the first. What a, what a juxtaposition between these two games. Yeah, even with 